everyone, Janet Boyer here. If you're new, welcome. Um, feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. I share crafty type stuff, especially with paper crafts and journaling, junk journaling, art journaling, art supplies, uh, the occasional coloring book. I'm also a jewelry maker. So I'd love to have you subscribe if you're interested and make a new friend. If you're returning, hey there. Hope you've been feeling crafty and creative. Um, today I wanted to share uh, some of my vintage botanical and flower books, including, yes, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. I have duplicates of all of these because I just couldn't... <laughs> tear out the papers to use and I just felt weird about it so I made sure I got a duplicate of each and you can get these I don't know if they still have them I get mine from thrift books but hey any you know supply place or eBay or your thrift store or somebody who's not interested in it you know these are all wonderful um, books um, they probably are out of print but you can get them you know good prices usually unless there's a run on them and I thought I would uh, do a flip through and share, you know, just for you to look at. And if you like them, you can get them yourself, use them for your journaling or collage projects. Also, um, I realized I had this, you know, if you've watched my channel, you know that I have um, <laughs> stitch journals that I forget about or I put them in with the holidays boxes and things. But here I had this one, um, my son stitched for me a few minutes ago for a, a botanical type journal and it's it's naked and I've got some uh, hand dyed papers with some cool papers and some like vintage botanical and birds some poetry some music and I was gonna trick this out but I haven't done it yet so just a little botanical journal I wanted to show you naked cool little gardening tips and things so I'm gonna have to work on that soon um, but for now let's go ahead and flip through some of these some of these are great just to have for reference like uh, folklore and symbolism of flowers plants and trees and there's over 200 rare and unusual floral designs and illustrations so cool it is so cool and these were all from the 70s and 80s so these are all vintage that almost seems obscene to say the word vintage 70s and 80s considering i was born in 1970 <laughs> doesn't that seem wrong guys if you're like in your 50s and stuff it just seems so i don't know obscene i'm gonna add some light let me go ahead and put my ring light on and see if this helps I'm not sure if that helps or not. I'm, um, the place I film is like ideal for late spring and summer, but once it comes winter and um, spring, the lighting gets not so good. But it's my favorite place to spread out and do my videos. So this is almost like um, a glossy, not a full gloss, but it's almost glossy. And it actually has a cool table of contents. So it tells you all the different um, flowers that you can learn the lore about. And then it shows where the original images came from. And these are like old ancient engravings. And I mean, look at the years on this. 1498, 1579. Most of these from the 1500s, a few in the 1600s. So these are old and gorgeous. I mean, look at that. You could cut out, like if you really wanted to harvest different things. But, um, there's cool history in there too about, um, you know, like the sacred, you know, trees and plants, what the folklores are, like Odin with, um, I don't know how you pronounce that, Bagdrasil, where he supposedly got the runes, Rod of Aaron from the Old Testament, Castra tree, cedar, but the images, you know, are gorgeous in here if you want to use these too. But like I said, they're so beautiful and it's so interesting. I could not cannibalize it. So I made sure that I uh, got an extra that was in less good quality, but good, good enough for collage and journals and what have you. But really fascinating. 
with all the um, vervain, sunflower, sycamore. So if you're into herbology and even essential oils, this is fascinating. Uh oh, aconite. I think uh, Agatha Christie used that to kill people. Monk's hood. <laughs> I love mysteries too, so I know a little bit about poisonous plants. <laughs> Crocus, they're probably coming up around here now. I live in Pennsylvania. Um, it is 70 degrees today, and oh, it always. If you know what um, musical this is from without Googling, let me know in the comment section below. Edelweiss. <laughs> and tomorrow it is supposed to be 75 degrees. So I'm excited. Hubby took the day off, and we are going to go to a local state park well it's about 40 45 minutes away gorgeous who knows i might you know what when i'm out there i might do a quick video and show it to you because it's beautiful up there i haven't been there for a few years it's ohio pal state park it's uh not far where falling water is that uh, famous house by frank lloyd wright and uh, I think Frank Lloyd Wright's house is closed right now for the inside tours, but you can do the outside walking tours. So, maybe I'll take um, a short video and upload it. And uh, I don't, I don't um, upload many personal videos to my public channel because I don't know if people are even interested in that because quite frankly I know this is going to sound so antisocial but I'm like not into the personal <laughs> behind the scenes a lot of times and the personal updates of some crafters and things and, and and it's not that I'm antisocial please understand it's just you know when you have limited time and sometimes you just need um you know you just want information or inspiration I mean I don't mind if they pepper it like like I'm doing like where you you talk about life stuff while you're actually showing things but when they just like sit and talk to you and tell you about their updates and things and but even sometimes that can get a bit I don't know I sound so unusual uh, antisocial and I swear I'm not I'm like the most bubbly <laughs> talkative <laughs> social person I don't know I watch YouTube on my TV so you know I mostly use it for you know inspiration and actual tutorials not for like I'm lonely and need a friend because I'm not lonely, you know, so and if I sound bitchy, I am so sorry. I don't mean it to come out that way. I am hormonal though. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, menopause is not for sissies, but I'm sure you can tell that I'm a friendly, fo friendly folk, but I think you kind of, kind of know what I mean. Maybe you don't, maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just cranky. Okay. This was garden flower folklore. Again, these are just so beautiful. I mean, this is kind of like in a um, kind of off white, like in a crew color, and this is divided into um, seasons. And I've uh, I have another version of cannibalized, and I've used these in journals. Just tore them out and and pulled them, you know, put them in half. But you can also use them for collage. But these are really fascinating because it'll tell you the family they're from, the description, what they look like. It, it'll even tell the genius of this, the plant, where it came from, where it's um, native to, and some little backgrounds too sometimes. Grape hyacinths. My husband loved these. The only bad thing, they're black and white, but grape hyacinths, those are those really adorable plants that have like little tiny, they're like grape colored, you know, like grape purplish. And he loves these. Interesting. Genus muscari, the grape hyacinth. I was just looking because I love it so much. It smells like starch. They also call it a starch hyacinth. Oh, it's been used extensively in cooking. You can so that's really interesting. It makes tasty pickles. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry, I'm getting going down a rabbit hole. I just find uh, botanical information so fascinating. Legends, see Shakespeare. Some so there's a little bit of legend stuff in here too. And again, it's not colorful, but they're you know beautiful black and white you know pen images. Yeah, be sure you know one species, <laughs> a bellflower from another, because some are considered poisonous. 
So I surely wouldn't recommend this for a, um, like if you're harvesting or foraging, uh, don't be using <laughs> black and white or pen in images because, you know, you might need to see the color to actually determine if something is poisonous or not. But, you know, even sometimes these black and white ones are really lovely for the images for minimalist journal or some collage or what have you. Or even for inspiration, or if like you want to try to learn to draw yourself, sometimes these are really good to um, look at and practice your drawing. Or you could even color them, technically, you know? Why not? Why not make it into a coloring book? You could do that too. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but see, it is actually divided into like late spring, summer. It'll tell you um, instructions on like planting, how to propagate them. So it's really good if, you know, you're into planting as well. So see, we got summer. Did I just see a moon lily? I thought I saw a moon lily. That's my favorite, Sacred to Torah. No, that was a morning glory. Morning glories are cool too, but they're, they're invasive. Yeah, so, oh wait, there is some color in here. Oh, a floral calendar. Oh, that's pretty. So you never know what's hidden treasures are in some of these. I don't know, it tells you different things about... Oh, beautiful. Names in, you know, the Victorian language of flowers has a little bit of that in it, too. Lily Hatred. What? Oh, that's terrible. Those crazy Victorians. I mean, come on. But it even lists, you know, flowers in their meetings according to the Victorians. And they'll even have, like, colors in a garden. So, like, let's say you want flowers of a certain color, you know, to, if you're, like, landscaping. has that. Wow, really cool. Gardens in history. Oh, flowers used for dyes. Hey, junk journalers. <laughs> you know how it's always cool to find out about flowers and um, what colors they come out to be. You know, I have some avocado, um, dried avocado skins and seeds. I've been dying, haha, <laughs> no pun intended, to use for um, paper. See, it even goes to winter, like winter flowers. Because um, the avocado, you know, comes out with this, like, gorgeous, like, dark mauve purple. Wait, kind of like my fan polish. Come to think of it. Yeah. Neat, right? And here's wildflower. Oh, don't worry, we're going to get to this one. Woohoo. Wildflower folklore, again. And this, too, is black and white drawings. But, and this one is divided into coloring. So, blue and violet flowers. So this is kind of cool as a reference. So let's say you were doing a junk journal and you wanted, you know, if you're doing a blue journal and you need some blue accents and you're looking for, um, you know, free online um, images to print out like a public domain, those old, you know, like old paintings or, or what have you, and you need a certain color, you can um, reverse research like blue and violet and say, oh, What's a Virginia Day flower? Put it in Google Images and see if you can find some <gasps> stinging nettle. Oh, pro tip, guys. If you are suffering from allergies or any kind of seasonal deal, I'm telling you, stinging nettle is a miracle drug or miracle plant, I should say. My son was suffering so bad last year with his um, allergies in spring that it was almost like a bad cold. It was terrible. And we thought we were going to have to eventually take him to the allergist to get allergy shots. It was that bad. So I started researching and looking on YouTube and what kept coming up is stinging nettle. And then of course, rosemary as well. And so, you know, I guess old, old time people and farmers and what have you use stinging nettle tea. Um, but you know, there was a lot of testimonials to this and I Googled it and I found this stinging nettle tincture from, I think it's called Mary Ruth's on Amazon. And so I got that and I got some stinging nettle tea that you can find. I mean, you can obviously make your own, you know, with the plant, but you can get it made. And I got rosemary pills with rosemary actually in gel caps. And he, I swear to God, within two days, he was fine. He was, and he was just so grateful. He said, this is like a miracle drug. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. So, uh, and he used it subsequently and, you know, we even, my husband, and I even use it when we get the mild version and my son calls it miracle and it is. So 
pro tip, if you are suffering and you don't feel like doing over-the-counter drugs and or nothing seems to be working, uh, try stinging nettle. And the thing is, it's, it's, it's found in waste places and roadsides. I mean, isn't it terrible? So many things that we call weeds are so healing, like dandelion and what have you. Um, of course, you know, they call it stinging nettle because there's coarse hairs and it feels like stinging. Uh, but, you know, you can buy tinctures online, teas, and it will help if you have seasonal allergies. So, little pro tip for you. Hopefully that helps you like it helps us. So see, there's like white flowers. Oh, ginseng, another one. So white flowers and, you know, different colors. Yellow. So this is really interesting in that it's, you know, categorized according to color. But of course they don't show you the color, but that reminds me of Sacred de Toro. It's not the same thing though. I wonder if Sacred de Toro is in here. Hope you don't mind me going on a little. Uh, they also call it moonflower, jimson weed. Aha, moonflower. It's poisonous, but it's so cool. I used to grow them in my yard or on the side of the house. And they smell. See, I've already used this one, this uh, book. Uh, I must have used the. Wait, did I use the moonflower? That's weird. They said it was 94, unless I'm looking wrong. But anyway. Sacred de Torah is such a beautiful plant. They always call, they also call it Jim's weed, moonflower. Um, and it has these real prickly pods with seeds that you can grow. And the cool thing to me, they smell like peanut butter. <laughs> I love the smell of these like big old bulbs and, and they just, oh, they smell so good. And the moonflower, I mean, they don't stay out long and they bloom at night. That's the cool thing. Once it starts getting dark, they, they come out and I mean, the blooms are like bigger than my hand and they just, oh. My mouth's watering to think about it. They're just so soft and beautiful and they smell good, but they're poisonous. So I got to be careful. That's sacred de Torah, also called moon, moonflower or jimson weed. It's called a lot of different things. Now, a lot of people love the country diary of an Edwardian lady. I have not torn this <laughs> because it's Edith Holden. Um, she's written quite a few books and just amazing. She was born in 1871, lived in the village of Olton in Warwickshire. Wrote and illustrated this diary in 1906. Oh, no, I didn't know this. Oh, she was gathering buds from a tres chestnut street, uh, tree, and she died tragically by drown drowning in the Thames. Thames? How do you pronounce that? Thames? At Kew. Oh, I wonder if that's like where Kew Gardens are. Oh, that's sad. Oh, she was born in 1970. She was, what, 70, 50, 49? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know about her tragic life. But a lot of people love these. The, the originals in 1906. So these are a facsimile. But, you know, they're still... I mean, this is 77 and 80, 1982. But it looks, you know, like how she did it. But isn't this just gorgeous? I mean, her actual handwriting and her actual images. I mean, look how gorgeous these things are. You can see why I don't want to tear these out, right? I mean, it's just like a poetry book. and oh, This makes me want to go ahead and read it and use it like as a, a mindfulness practice. Just so gorgeous. I mean, look, look at this. This was illustrated and written by her. Such gorgeous handwriting and her personal notes. She wrote out a poem by Robert Burns. I mean, look how gorgeous. I assume they're watercolor. So I hope you're enjoying these uh, flip throughs. I know a lot of you like to do bot botanical stuff and vintage stuff with your art journals. And oh, look at these eggs, types of eggs in uh, art journals and collage and what have you. So I thought you guys might be interested if you've never seen a flip through of some of these, especially the Edith Holden Oh, I mean, isn't this just amazing? I don't even know if she intended this for publication. So many sketch artists are so talented. And, you know, they, they're not doing it to put it for sale. It's just their uh, personal journals, you know, per journaling, um, their thoughts, their artwork. Danny Gregory uh, from Sketchbook School, you can look at him on YouTube, you know, he's got dozens and dozens of sketchbooks. He turned to sketching and drawing and, and writing in his sketchbook after uh, his first wife died tragically. And 
um, or I think it was after her accident, she actually fell in a subway and became paralyzed. And then a couple years later, she fell from a balcony and uh, died. And he turned to journaling to help cope with it. He was a an ad man in New York, very successful. And then he turned to just sketchbooking. His stuff's beautiful. And, you know, and so many people do sketchbook um, art. And, I mean, look at her lettering. And they'll do urban sketching or plein air and what have you. And none of them's for sale. It's just a mindfulness practice or self-expression. So give yourself permission out there if you're a creative. Don't feel like you have to make things for sale, you know, or even to give away. I mean, do things for your soul just because you want to express yourself or because you want to, you see something beautiful in nature and you want to try to capture it or reproduce it. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, you know, many studies show how creativity is good for the soul. You know, it lowers your heart rate, lowers your blood pressure, lowers incidence of depression. I mean, I actually uh, certified in uh, life coaching with art therapy. And yeah, tons of studies. So allow yourself to be creative just because art for art's sake is wonderful. It is not a waste of time. No matter what anybody says, foxglove, also poisonous. Or art supplies, things like that. That is a good investment of your money. As long as you're not going crazy, of course. And you're not taking food out of your mouth. <laughs> or your families. But, you know, art is life. Well, at least part, most of it for me. Outside of my family, creativity and art is just... It's life. It's life. So give yourself permission to create as much as you need to. Schedule it if you have to. Okay? Because I said so. <laughs> so I really hope you're enjoying this. This would um, be really great as a mindfulness journal. Like if you just want to read a page a day or whatever, especially since it's organized by month. Oh, this is kind of like what the um, Sacred to Torah seed pods look like. They look very similar. I mean, the leaves, they don't, obviously. But... Ooh, yummy. Blackberry so beautiful i mean oh, thank god for artists right of all sorts that's and oh we used to have this plant uh, growing up oh it was a you okay i wonder what that was and, we, and they were so cool these berries on there we we had some bushes outside my mom and dad's house but um oh we have this too i was wondering what they were i'm sorry i'm going down a rabbit hole uh and that's what I meant earlier when I was talking about I don't really care for videos or people are just talking about their personal stuff, personal stuff. And and, that, and that's, you know what, I look at it this way. If you want to share that, start a different channel and just can call it a vlog, you know, a video blog. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and God bless people who share their struggles and share their life and people identify with that and they don't, and they don't, you know, they feel less alone. But for me, I want to hear about a person's art journey. Like why they create, how it helps them, what they notice in nature, maybe techniques on capturing color or supplies that help them execute their images or, you know, even calligraphy or how to improve your handwriting or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, for me, that's just why I'm looking at YouTube. Like I said, I put it on a TV. Um, we have smart TV. So we, we, we probably watch YouTube more than anything because um, we love to learn in this family and um, art tutorials and things like that and an artist's process. I just, I love it. I love it. So please don't think I was being <laughs> nasty when I said I don't care for people you know, talk about their personal stuff. Well, not only that too. Sometimes people are just going through some really tragic shit. Forgive my language. And I'm telling you, you know, life is, life is hard. It can be very, very hard. Trust me, I know. And, um, you know, I try not even to watch the news, see who's killing who now, who's bombing who. I don't want to hear about it. Who's tearing who down, Who you know, who's being divisive. I, it's just overwhelming. And sometimes people share their personal pr process or, their, I mean, what they're going through. And it's just heartbreaking and it's hard. It's like I unsubbed from the cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy, because um, his cat Caroline has cancer and he's chronicling her, her journey, journey. And I'm like no, no, don't want to do that. Lost cats before breaks my heart and I get gutted. So actually a lot of reason I don't want to hear about people's personal updates is because I'm, I'm too sensitive. It overwhelms me and heart breaks my heart and I just can't take it. And so, uh, I know, I know I just, just 
it's just the way it is. I can't take it. I can't. I lost my first husband to leukemia, watched him suffocate to death, been through uh, hell and different um, aspects. And so here I am talking about personal things after I'm <laughs> bitching about it, but I'm just explaining why I'm not big on that. Um, if it's not a personal vlog. Now, it's different if somebody gives an update, let's say they haven't posted, you know, haven't posted videos for weeks and people are wondering and they say, hey, an update and this is what's been going on. You know, that that's different. But I'm talking about people who do it like every day, you know, talking about and I, you know what? Different strokes for different folks. It, you know, if you you happen to be a YouTuber and you're watching this and you're the chatty type, please do not feel that you need to change just because I personally may not like, you know, hearing that a lot. Never, ever change your style and your values. Because someone out there will be touched by it or like it and, and your tribe will find you. So I'm just, you know, I'm just sharing my own personal two cents of what I really like to see on YouTube. But uh, do not in any way use my opinion to <laughs> affect how you do videos if you happen to be a YouTuber. Because I'm, I'm just, I'm just sharing, you know, uh, you do you. That's important. You have to, you know, express yourself the way you feel to. And if you feel to be personal, by golly, you do it. You do it. You know, I'm just uh, sharing my two cents. Just sharing my two cents. So anyway, guys, I hope you really uh, enjoyed this uh, flip through of these vintage books. Um, look for thrift books or other places online to get them used, of course, if you can. And um, even if you don't use them for your art or junk journaling, you know, you can use them for you know, studies if you want to learn how to draw or color or just because it'll help you slow down and learn more about the world around us, the flowers and plants and trees and birds and bees and all that good stuff. All right. Well, I hope you're enjoying your weekend and I got some goodies coming. Oh my gosh. I got an order of from cher a cherry on top. It's this website um, that has like journaling supplies and journaling and things like that. And I got a whole... <laughs> load of new stamperia get this coffee and chocolate theme oh yes oh yes so that's probably going to be my next video so if you're not subscribed by now by golly you better <laughs> especially if you like coffee and chocolate and i do actually have a coffee journal made and i have a a walkthrough somewhere here on the video uh me and on my channel so anyway you guys take care i'll see you next time if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and do that and like the video and please leave me a comment if you like and tell me what your two cents are about anything I've, I've shared here. You take care and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye for now.